Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Meeples and Miniatures Miniature Review Show with me Neil Shuck. Today we're going to be having a look at a recent release from Warlord Miniatures. What we're looking at is actually part of their Bolt Action Miniatures World War 2 range, their Red Devils World War 2 British Airborne box set. Now Bolt Action Miniatures as a miniatures range has been around for several years now and was originally sculpted by Simon Bodgery and Paul Hicks. Now it was taken over by Warlord Games a couple of years ago and they've continued producing new miniatures in that range. More recently they've been producing several ranges of power troops. So we've seen US Powers, German Fallschirm Jäger and of course British Airborne. So let's take a look at this box set shall we? Well, first of all, the box set consists of a total of 19 miniatures. It's actually got some nice artwork on front and back. But once we open the box, we'll see that there is a large plastic insert in which the miniatures are contained. It actually means that the box is a little bit oversized, full of with miniatures in it. And that's primarily because this particular size box is the usual box that comes with all their plastic troops, such as their Ancients and their Pike and Shot range. And this is the size that is used for all their plastic sprues. So it sort of makes sense to stay with a similar size box, despite the seeming, well, lack of content once you actually open the box itself. So once we've opened the box, what can we see as far as the contents are concerned? Well, the box contents can be split into four different parts. First off, you have four figures that comprise a command section, or at least part of it. We see them here, going from left to right. We have an RTO operator, an airborne officer with a Sten, wearing a helmet. He's also blowing a hunting horn, which is quite a distinctive figure, I believe actually taken from John Frost during the Arnhem campaign. Uh, he used a hunting horn to help muster his troops on the drop zone. Then we have a medic. And finally we have another officer, uh, again with Sten gun, but this time sporting a red bebe. Next up we have a 10-man rifle squad. This is divided into two parts. First off we have several troops armed with the SMLE rifle. Here we see five troopers. What we've actually got here are four troopers with rifles. One of them also happens to be the loader for the Bren gun team. A rather dynamic set of poses, I think you'll agree. Here we've got front and back views which show off both the detailing and the level of accuracy as far as the kit is concerned. However, taking a closer look at all the running poses of these particular models, you'll notice they're very, very similar dollies. So maybe the poses aren't quite as, as varied as we may first think. Following on from the riflemen, we then have five further minis for the rifle squad. Four armed with Sten guns, one of which is armed with a Bren light machine gun. That's the second from the left. This set of figures also includes one NCO, who I believe is the guy on the right. And again, the running poses are very similar. So although we have like two running figures, one with a helmet, one with a beret, so other than the change of the headgear and a very slight change in kit, the figures are very, very similar. Again, a good level of detailing. Uh, you can see a little bit of flash in the officer on the right-hand side. A typical place, really, in between the weapon and the body. Other than that, good clean sculpts again and looking at the back yes yet, yet more details of uh, good examples of kit so excellent detail work on these figures following on from that we have a piat team now this is actually a slight difference from what we see on the pitch on the back of the box the piat team on the back of the box is actually a team that is firing whereas the team actually containing the box in this particular case is actually moving you've got a loader and a firer I would imagine that the variation is simply there because they do have these two variations within the range. It's the same with the Bringun team. I would imagine you may have an example where some of the rifle teams contain the Bringun team actually firing in prone position as opposed to standing. And then the final three models in the set are made up by this Vickers heavy machine gun team, consisting of a gunner complete with the gun itself, that's a single cast, then you have the loader and a team commander as well. Again very well sculpted with a good level of detail and that comment can really be made about this entire range from the example seen here the sculpting is top notch very accurate very clean as far as actual casting is concerned there is very little flash to speak of that's obviously a little bit as i pointed out but there's very little other flash in evidence literally no mold lines to speak of and also i mean again i've done very little clean up on these models so you see there's there's very few runoffs either to clean up so taking these out of the box it'll probably take a five ten minute job at most to get them all cleaned up and ready to go 
I'm also talking about, as far as the moulding is concerned, uh, one of the things to note, the alloy used in these particular models is quite soft. What I mean by that is that the weapons are fairly easy to move around, so especially if you've had an incident where a rifle's got bent, for example, it's a, a really easy task to bend it back into place. There's no problems there, so the metal is quite soft and malleable. And that is also particularly useful on some of the running poses. Uh, I found a couple of these particular models were bent over a little bit too far on the bases, and so I had to just do a very slight adjustment to the angle that they're bent over so they stand up on the bases. Again, a very easy job to do. And finally, you'll see here an example of the, the height of the miniatures. You'll see the miniatures are 28mm to the eye, about 30 31 mil to the top of the head so given their height and general build i think they'll fit in very well with a lot of the other mini miniature manufacturers out there um, things such as artisan for example immediately spring to mind now the next into question is price this box set works out at 25 pounds for that you get 19 miniatures is this good value well Warlords sell their single bolt action miniatures for £1.50 each, which I would suggest is probably on the high side for 28mm World War II. Certainly slightly higher than average. So what you actually get this box set are 16 miniatures that you can buy standalone for £1.50 each. On top of that, you get a Vickers heavy machine gun team. That team in itself is £6 is bought on its own. You put all that together in this box total value of the box is 30 pounds and you get it for 25 so a 16 and a half percent discount if you buy the box set which isn't bad but this does lead to another question why would you buy this box set in the first place and here i have a bit more of an issue and the issue i have is simply this as far as i can see from the contents of this box set this box set represents a company hq plus associated support with the vigors hmg okay you don't tend to get medics and RTOs allocated down at platoon HQ level. And as I say, the biggest heavy machine gun was certainly allocated out uh, at battalion level. They were, they were in a support company and were allocated out probably one per company, two at most. And in addition to that, this box set is almost apparent by what it doesn't contain as opposed to what it does contain. There are two figures that are immediately apparent by their absence from this box set, and that is two inch mortar and snipers. A standard British Airborne platoon had several two inch mortars attached to it, usually two or three. Again, a platoon usually had at least a couple of snipers, depending on what orbit you look at, even down to the point where every rifle squad would have an allocated sniper. Now, Warlord do two other box sets. They do a 10 man rifle squad for £12, which is very similar makeup to what we see in this particular box. But they also do a specialist box set, which contains two snipers, two two inch mortars, and two Piat teams. And that's £10. Now, if you're gaming in 28mm, I would suggest the majority of people are gaming at either platoon or maximum company level. So you're gaming with somewhere between 40 and 120 ish troops. So you'd be looking at several rifle units, two or three two inch mortars, and a couple of snipers per platoon, at least. So where does the command figures with the RTO and the Medic and the HMG come in? That's company level. In that game, you know, you need one box set. That's one of these. Whereas if this box set was to represent a platoon HQ, you'd need three or four. So this is where I really query this particular box set. They're great minis. I really like bolt action. They're probably my favourite range of World War II figures. And Warlord seem to have maintained the standard when it comes down to the quality of the sculpting and the miniatures available. And whilst they are a little expensive, as a, my biggest query with this box set is why on earth would you ever buy more than one? Which is a shame because otherwise it's a very good set of minis. So, will I recommend Bolt Action Airborne? Definitely. Great sculpts, a great selection of minis, though a tad pricey. Would I recommend this box set? To be honest, that's debatable. And it really comes down to what you were doing. If you wanted to have a British Airborne unit and include a Vickers machine gun, then yes, get the box set. However, if you're only looking to build a small force, potentially just a platoon, then I think this is something that you might really have to think about before plunging in. This box set is not the place to start when you're collecting a British Airborne army. It just doesn't contain the right mix of weapons to start a platoon. That in itself is a great shame, and it's main let down. Well, thank you for watching the show. I hope it's been useful. Until next time, take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.